Here we are. Welcome back, people, to another knee jerk video. That's right. My name is Jay London, and this is Fantasy Football Scout. So, if this is the first time that you're seeing my big head yet, or this is the first time that you're watching one of these videos, the idea is that we react to the games that we've just had, and hopefully that will help us all to get the perfect players and the perfect picks for the next game week. But this one, this one's going to be a little bit different. Why? Because we're at the end of the season. Oh my goodness me. Game week 38 is finally here. We have reached the end of the season. So hopefully you guys are having a really good game week 37. All the players that I'm obviously going to be talking about and the matches that I'm talking about and the fixtures that we're talking about, it's just going to be targeting that last single game week of the season. Yeah, so as you know, we're halfway through a double game week right now. So there's still loads of games to play and all of that stuff, but there's still loads of things that we have already learned. Yeah, so we're going to talk about that. We'll have a look through the fixtures, fixture by fixture, and hopefully it will help us to nail the right players for game week 38. All right, so yeah, just before we begin, caveats as always, depending on when you're watching this video, things could possibly change. Maybe Everton are now safe. Uh, maybe Tottenham have secured fourth place or Arsenal have, um, or maybe Manchester City has won the league. Whatever has happened um, due to what basically the time that you're watching the video, take that into consideration before putting in players. And you don't need me to tell you that. You've got your own common sense. You know what you're doing. So as I say, I am Jay London, aka FPL of the day. I've just released my final video over on my own YouTube channel, so go and have a look at that at the end of this video. But right now, let's just delve straight in. Let's have a quick look at the fixtures so far so you can see exactly what's going on. But I'm not going to spend too long on this screen because, as I say, I'm going to go through it fixture by fixture to make sure that you guys are targeting the right player. So I want to start with the team that you're really, really, you're either really happy about because you own some of these players or you're really gutted about because you don't own any of them. And that is the massive fixture, which was Watford against Leicester City. What happened here? I'll tell you what happened here. Watford's defending was atrocious. Awful, awful defending. I don't know if you've managed to catch the game or you caught the highlights or anything like that. They played so bad. So, yeah, I'm going to be eyeing up that, that last game of the season, that Chelsea fixture against Watford. That could be absolute carnage. If Watford play the way that they played just like just yesterday against Leicester, then who knows what could happen there. But, yeah, let's give Leicester some credit as well. Vardy looked nice and sharp. He looked like he was on it. So did Harvey Barnes. I really like the way that Harvey Barnes took both of his chances as well. There were nice finishes. Uh, and James Madison did what James Madison does. Got some nice assists as well. So yeah, if you have got any of those players, then you are laughing. Your rank has gone up and you're not sitting on a red out row. <laughs> um, and hopefully you're, you're doing quite well for this game week. All right, there is another player that did that, that loads of people put in and kind of did deliver just a little bit. We'll get to him in just a sec. But if we have a think about the next fixture for Leicester, are we going to be bringing any players? I mean, I don't see why not. They're going to be having a nice fixture against Southampton. We all know that Southampton haven't been great defensively. So who's to say that people like Madison Barnes and Vardy can't go and run riot again? But I feel like the only reason that Leicester did score those five goals was because of how bad Watford was. So I'm going to be targeting more so the Chelsea against Watford fixture than that Leicester City against Southampton fixture in game week 38. Hopefully that makes sense. But yeah, well done to you. Round of applause. If you've got Madison, if you've got Barnes, if you've got Vardy, or you've got one of those guys and you cleaned up and you've got a nice green arrow. Well done. Let's move on to the next fixture, which was the early kickoff, which was Tottenham against Burnley. So yeah, Harry Kane owners obviously are rejoicing. I feel a little bit sorry for people who played their free hit because I know a lot of people brought in Son and he's been like absolutely amazing. I've had him in my team for about five, six, maybe seven game weeks and he's just been cleaning up. Like he's been great. He's been the success behind all of my green arrows in recent weeks. But now uh, loads of people brought him in and then he didn't do anything, <laughs> which... You know, it's funny when you look back at it. It's just, it's just how FPL goes. Um, how FPL goes, right? Um, but yeah, Harry Kane was the person to come away with the goal. Uh, nice little penalty. He took it well. Loads of people are not happy with the decision, though. But it's just one of those ones, isn't it? The rules are the rules. You can argue down in the comments below. Uh, but the main thing is, what are we taking from this game? Number one is we don't want any Burnley players. That's for sure. And number two is this fixture: Norwich against Spurs. 
is probably going to be the one that I am targeting the most for game week 38 with my own team. I just feel like Norwich, they just don't look really great. We'll talk about them in a bit when we get to their fixture. But I just, I just, I'm, I've got a feeling that Spurs could do some real, real damage against Norwich on that last day of the game week. Yeah, um, maybe because. Son is obviously chasing that golden boot. Um, Harry Kane wants to try and just rack up as many goals as possible before the end of the season. So then he can go on to that story like we always have during the transfer window when he's proposed a move to like Man United or to City or abroad or whatever. We all know how it goes. But yeah, Spurs, I'm expecting to do really, really well against Norwich. And if you want like a cheeky differential, cheeky little punt, then why not someone like Ryan Sessignon? He's looking all right going forward. Um, and yeah, keeping some clean sheets there as well. So those are the only guys that I will be targeting there from the Spurs game. Let's move on to fiction number three, which is Villa against Crystal Palace. So yeah, not much to report here. I don't know if you managed to catch the Ollie Watkins goal. I'm assuming that you've seen the highlights. <laughs> yeah, but what was that a shot? Was it not a shot? Maybe he should have had some, some goals before that as well. So I'm not complaining, especially due to the fact that I do have him in my team. But again, nothing really to write home about. Uh, loads of people brought in Danny Ings, especially if there was on a free hit. I saw a lot of that. And yeah, maybe he could have got some returns. But again, if we're looking at that final game week of the season, I still can't believe I'm saying that. Um, Aston Villa's playing Manchester City. Do you really want to be hanging on to Aston Villa assets against a Manchester City team that smells blood, that needs to win every single game and has to go on to try and score as many goals as possible to make sure that that goal difference is settled as well and, and, and stop Liverpool from catching them. I know that I, I'm not going to be putting in any Aston Villa players, especially if I haven't got any. I don't plan on bringing any in. Cash, Luca Dean, all of those guys can stay away from my FPL team. Instead, I'm going to be eyeing up some Manchester City guys, but we'll talk about Manchester City in just a bit. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm taking from that game. Aston Villa, they didn't look too bad. Ollie Watkins was a little bit fortunate to, to get the goal. Let's see how they all do in their next fixture. Coutinho was missing as well, which again, like these aren't players that we're going to be thinking about for game week 38, right? You don't need me to tell you that. I'm going to say stay clear of them. Stay, care, stay clear of Palace as well, unless you want the world's most ultimate cheeky pun and differential Maybe you want to put in a Crystal Palace player because Manchester United's defence is absolutely shocking. We know that. But yeah, as far as these two teams go, I'm going to be staying away from them. Uh, next fixture up is Leeds against Brighton. Again, I'm not going to spend too long talking about this one, guys. I don't expect anybody to be bringing in any players like um, Rafinha or Mope or any Leeds or Brighton assets because... Yeah, I feel like that ship has finally sailed. We all know that Rafinha is a massive troll now. Um, and Brighton's looks good in recent game weeks. But yeah, they conceded a goal in the last one. They only managed to score one against Leeds. Um, and again, Leeds is probably a team that I will be targeting in that final game week. If you want a nice little cheeky punt, I do quite like the look of Brentford Leeds in game week 38. Maybe Ivan Tony could be someone that we're looking at or, or Christian Eriksen if you've got if you've got like a free hit and you want someone to just have like a cheeky punt or you're going to have some fun on the final game week of the season, then you could go for something like that. But as I say, I'm not going to spend much longer talking about these two teams because I don't expect anyone to be bringing in any of these players. Let's move them away, move them along, go over there, Leeds and Brighton, and let's move on to the next fixture, fixture number five, which of course was West Ham against Manchester City. So this was very, very exciting if you are A, a Liverpool fan, um, and B, a neutral, and you don't care who wins the title because, of course, West Ham went two goals up. Two goals up. And how sharp does Gerard Bowen look, by the way? Both of those goals, like he just took it with so much confidence. It was the Gerard Bowen that we loved so much halfway through the season. Remember when he was smashing it and we all had him in our teams? And there was double game weeks and we captained him and he was just amazing. Yeah, he looked really, really good. So again, maybe he's somebody that we're going to be targeting for next season. But yeah, that Brighton fixture, I think there might be some midfielders that we could actually go for that are from better, stronger teams and stronger attacks. But 
yeah, I'm not going to begrudge anyone. If you want to put in someone like Gerard Bowen, then psh, go for it. But yeah, Manchester City is obviously going to be the team that a lot of us are going to be targeting for that final game week of the season. We want to be putting in players like De Bruyne. And then the other ones, we just want to try and make sure that we're nailing the players that are actually going to be playing. Is it going to be Foden? Grealish? Is it going to be Sterling? Is it going to be Mares? Probably not because he missed the penalty. So yeah, maybe Mares isn't going to be back into that squad or on penalties at the very least. So yeah, Manchester City assets are who we're going to be eyeing up for that final game week of the season. I'm not really interested in bringing in any West Ham players, even though Gerard Bowen looked like an absolute machine against Manchester City. Gave him a big scare. Gave him a very big scare. I kind of thought that Man City would come back anyway at some point. Yeah, I know you did too. Right, so yeah, that's five fixtures down. Two more left to go. Number six is Wolves against Norwich. Again, this is a fixture that I got, I'm i not... I, I really just do not expect you to be bringing in any Wolves players. And if you are, stay away from them. You can clip this and send it to me if I'm wrong. But no, we do not want any Wolves players... For game week 38, especially with the fact that Wolves are going to be playing Liverpool at Anfield. We do not want to have any Wolves players, especially like defenders or anything like that, in our teams. Because we know if Manchester City haven't already confirmed that title at the time of recording, obviously that hasn't happened um, at the time of this video going out. Then, yeah, Liverpool's going to have to put out one of their strongest squads and continue to chase down that title. So, yeah, players like Pukki managed to get a goal. Great for him. I mean, I took him out and put in Richarlison, which we'll get into for a bit. But it's just sod's law. It's just the way that FPL goes, right? You take out a player and then they score. And Ike Nori, remember him? Remember when we was all eyeing him up as uh, like the Wolves' ultimate defender? And then we had him in our teams. He's come away with a goal, but yeah. Two teams that we really do not care about for game week 38. And I'm not going to be targeting any of these boys. No, no. Nah. Get away Wolves. Get away Norwich. Let's move on to the final game of this fixtures list. And it is Everton against Brentford. So yeah, of course, this was this was a nice game for the neutral. Of course, Everton are fighting for their lives. Um, and this does mean that they, they're, they're still in the race. So obviously, I'm calling it a race. They're still in the survival chances. Um, and obviously, they're still going to be playing out of their skins to try and make sure that they're securing premiership football for next season. So I'm, I'm very confident that they're going to give it everything in their second game. So if you do have players like Rich Allison, you're really, really happy because obviously he came away with a goal, came away from an assist. He almost had two goals, but yeah, Dominic Calvert-Lewin was right in front of the referee going, my goal, my goal, my goal. I did, did you see that? <laughs> cheeky, cheeky guy. You know what they say about strikers, yeah? Um, but yeah, he was my captain. I'll show you my team in just a little bit. He was my captain, um, so I'm quite happy that he has managed to save me thus far for this game week. If we're talking about knee-jerk reactions, though, are we going to be putting any Everton players in against Arsenal? It's a tricky one. Because if, if Everton have still got something to play for and they're not safe yet against Arsenal, then that could be a very interesting fixture and there could be a lot of goals either side. Like Arsenal could be attacking, so could Everton. And the way that Everton did come out in that game that we just watched yesterday, they looked really, really attacking. Of course, until they got the red card, until they had a player sent off, they looked like they could have been scoring a whole heap of goals against the Brentford side. That's been quite good um, of late. So yeah, Obviously, Everton's going to be playing Arsenal. If they both got something to play for, it could really be an exciting, entertaining game of football. Who knows what's going to happen there, but we're going to keep an eye on it. Um, I know loads of people are still going to have players like Rich Allison and Gordon in their team. I'm not going to be getting rid of them, but would I be bringing them in if I didn't have them? Probably not. Probably not for that fixture. Yeah, so that's it. That's it so far. As I say, um, there's only seven fixtures that have gone down um, halfway through this game week. So, yeah, still loads more to play for. But I wanted to get on it nice and early for you guys to make sure that you are fully equipped for game week 38. We'll probably do some more stuff um, towards the end of the game week. So just keep your eyes peeled uh, and keep watching Fantasy Football Scout. And head over to my own YouTube channel as well at FPL of the day and go and check out the final video of the season that I released. Yeah, no more content for the rest of the season, which just sounds crazy. Sounds crazy, right? Before I go, and I try and do a runner, 
I'm going to show you my team, which I'm not really happy about at the moment. Yeah, it's not going that great. Uh, I know it says 33 points there, but yeah, 41 points. Richardson was the only person who actually managed to turn up. Ollie Watkins did score as well. I don't know how he managed to... We managed to put that in the back of the net. I don't even know if he touched it, but yeah, we'll take it. Um, so yeah, we're going to see what happens in the second game. Hopefully, Richardson can score a hat trick or something like that. And there's still loads to play for. So let's see what happens. Um, and yeah, rank's not looking too bad. Hoping to still finish in the top 10k. And hopefully, you guys have got some nice, juicy green arrows as well. <laughs> yeah. Right. So good luck um, for the rest of game week 37. Hopefully that helps. As I say, I like to keep these videos nice and short and sweet and punchy and straight to the point. So hopefully that does help um, with some of the picks that you will be making for game week 38. Um, and yeah, leave a comment down below. Let me know if any of these players that we're speaking about are must-haves. Are they going to be people that you're going to be bringing in? And if I don't see you before the end of the season, yeah, then it's been a pleasure bringing you these videos on Fantasy Football Scout. It's been a pleasure bringing you these videos on my own YouTube channel, FPL of the Day. If you haven't subscribed to either channel yet, then please make sure you do. And let's just hope for some green arrows for that final game week of the season, all right? Good luck, people. And I'll see you, if not in preseason, in the new season, all right? Good luck.